G'day, Professor Joseph Drew here. This is another video in my series for postgraduate students. It's designed for, and in this video, I'll go through the steps and what's required to revise a manuscript. So you've submitted a manuscript to the journal, you've got the email back that says we want you to do some revisions, which is the usual reply. What do you do next? Now, just so you understand my bona fides, I have 76 peer-reviewed publications out there. I've gone through the revision process 76 times probably. Uh, indeed, I've had close to 100% strike rate. There was only ever one journal paper I was asked to revise, do a major revision for, that didn't subsequently get accepted. But that was more about that particular journal, which was an A-rank journal, having an editor meltdown um, than what I did myself. So if you follow what I propose here and you do it diligently, you can expect similar success. So this is the sort of email you'll get. This is an email from a paper that just got a revision ordered on it, which I've just completed. In fact, I think the paper plan I, I covered in one of our earlier videos. So or dear whoever, whoever was the subscribing author, corresponding author, this is your paper. This is the paper ID, which you must always quote so that they can find it. You've got to remember, editors have got hundreds of papers out there. They need to be able to find things easily. Um, the referees have re recommended some revisions. This is what you want to see. At this stage, you know there's revisions. If you do the revisions properly and thoroughly, the paper is going to get accepted. As I say, very few papers get accepted without revisions. I've had two in my whole career. Getting revisions is the normal way things go. So they ask me us to respond to these referee comments, which I'll put down later, and revise my manuscript, and then it tells you how to go about uploading the revision. So this is the uh, comments from Reviewer 1. They were quite lengthy. I've cut out some of it, but just to give you a feel for what happens. Normally a reviewer will start off with something nice, even if they're going to go and be nasty and hammer your paper afterwards. This reviewer started off with two really nice paragraphs. Um, you know, they they call the, the theory uh, theoretical framework of using Plato and Aristotle, they call it a first, which it is and long overdue and a classy move straight away i know this reviewer's on site he really wants he or she really wants this paper published so it's in my interest to to do this thoroughly and make sure i lock it in however there will be at least two reviewers sometimes three and sometimes they conflict in what they want and indeed in this particular paper reviewer two said the precise opposite about Plato and Aristotle. They said it was distracting and annoying and they didn't know why it was there. The editor has been very kind and allowed us to use our discretion. They've noticed there's a big difference there. And my discretion is to keep it in because this review is correct. It is a first. It's well and truly overdue. And people need to think that this, understand that this idea of optimal size is a debate that's been going on for 2,500 years. And we're no further to reconciling the different opinions. So it gives you good reason to go on and read the paper. So I'm keeping it in. I think one of my co-authors is not so keen. The other one is keen as corresponding author, as lead author. You have the deciding vote. Sometimes there's going to be differences of opinion, and my deciding vote is it stays. Um, they do have some minor suggestions. When you hear that, it says minor revision. What they mean is that you you still have to go and address everything, but you're not doing heaps of changes. For a major revision, you're looking at replacing anywhere from 25 to 50% of your manuscript rewriting it. Big job can take longer than actually writing the manuscript in the first place. For a minor revision, you're looking at some sentences here and there, some references here and there. It's not a big job at all. It's something that can get done in a day. So these are their minor revisions. They want a reference to Dollary's work on policy-based evidence making. So easy. Stick a sentence in, get the paper, read it, put in an appropriate sentence, and add the reference to your reference list. In fact, I added it in a few times to, to make sure it wasn't just standing out there like a sore thumb, that it actually had a purpose. The next thing was a comment. You get these unusual comments from time to time about public policy architects. It's the wording I always use when I'm describing people who design public policy. It's used a lot. I'm not the only person using it. 
Um, apparently I used that word 16 times. And this person's wondering if it's an insult or a compliment to the people designing the reform. It's neither. It's just a way of saying people define, uh, designing the reform. So I'll write back to this reviewer, my revision report, and say, look, it's not meant to be a compliment or an insult. It's just a way of describing people who who design reforms. It's a phrase that's been used a lot. Here's some other examples of where it's been used. I'm just following scholarly convention. Um, fourth, the article states this, and he says, I'm wondering if the improvement could also be accounted by for, for by some local governments divesting themselves of assets as a result of fit for the future. It's actually a really good point, and you always get good points from reviewers, even if their comments seem strange and you're thinking, what on earth are they still talking about? If you do them the courtesy of thinking deeply about what it is, even if they've got themselves they've got, got themselves misapprehension and managed to get themselves um, confused on the point, that is still valuable information because it says that you've you've not been clear enough. In this case, they've given me a really good suggestion, which you get from good reviewers at A-Rank journals, which is, hey, selling assets might have contributed towards it a little bit. It would only be a little bit. That's nothing compared to the grant flows and the offsetting of debt. But it's part of the story. And thank you very much, reviewer one. I've added it. Then this is the this is like a golden comment from a reviewer. These are just suggestions and this article could be published as it stands. It doesn't get much better than that. So thank you, Reviewer 1. As I said, Reviewer 2 also had a whole heap of more or less minor things. The big thing was get rid of Plato and Aristotle. And as I said, the editor, if you get good editors, they will read the comments carefully and realise when there's a problem and realise when reviewers have said something that's not important or strange and they'll just give you some guidance, editorial guidance about what to do. She told me to make up my own mind and I've told you how I've done that. Now, if there is a big conflict and you don't know what to do, write to the editor very politely and say, look, there's this conflict. I think this is what I should do. What do you feel about it? Because at the end of the day, it will be the editor making the decision. So you then make your changes in track change. You hit that little track change button on Microsoft Word. But after you've done that, only a couple of years ago, I realized that you need to also highlight it in yellow. Because what happens is, is once you submit this revised manuscript, it doesn't appear in track change anymore for anyone just getting the PDF version that the journal sends to the reviewer. So if you don't highlight it in yellow, they won't be able to find your changes. The editor will, because I'll probably have the original Word document, but any reviewer won't. And I know as a reviewer how frustrating it is. You get this revision report and you can't find the changes. It's really, really painful and it puts you in a bad mood. The last thing you want to do is stick your reviewer in a bad mood. Highlight it in yellow or stand out like a sore thumb and they'll be able to spring straight to it. That means a quicker review. That means quicker final un, un, uh, unconditional acceptance, which is what you want. Okay, so this is an example of where I've done one of these minor revisions. So this is talking about selling these assets. And I said, and also perhaps a sale of surplus assets arising from amalgamation. Simple as that. Now, you then, once you've done the revisions and highlighted them, you then write a revision report. It starts off, we thank the editor very much for her kind offer or his kind offer. Make sure you read who the editor was and put the right pronoun in there to do a revision on this manuscript. Below is our responses to each of the review comments. You then have a subheading, reviewer one. You paraphrase their comments, putting them in the most nice and helpful way you can. And then under each comment, you provide a very short response. So reviewer one suggested that the sale of assets might also have contributed to the decrease in the debt ratio. We thank the reviewer for this very wise and important point. We've added it to the manuscript on page such and such as appears in the yellow highlighted text. Simple as that. Now make sure you keep thanking the reviewers. Even if they weren't helpful, they still gave up a lot of their time and you gain nothing by getting them offside. Um, and make sure you're, you're 
very thankful to the editor as well. The very last line that revision report is going to be, thank you so much for asking us to do these revisions. We can see that by adhering closely to the wise advice that we've been given, that our manuscript is much better. And that will always be the case. No one enjoys doing revisions. I certainly don't. I usually grumble and swear and all sorts of things while I'm doing them. However, at the end of the revisions, or sometimes it's not until the paper gets published, I sit back and think, oh, gee, I'm glad I did that. It's so much better. And that's happened 75 times, and that'll happen to you too. If you do them thoroughly, you must do a comprehensive, thorough job of these reviews. If you don't, you'll get rejected. I've even known uh, some authors been asked not to submit again to the journal. I was one of the reviewer, and they did a slapdash tiny little review when it was clearly labelled major revision and the editor wrote to them and said don't bother coming back here again. Do it properly. The editor spent a lot of time, the reviewer spent a lot of time, even if you don't agree with their points, treat them thoroughly and treat them with courtesy. That's my strong recommendation. So in conclusion, engage fully. Be grateful. Even if some of the comments weren't that helpful, they would have got you to think about the manuscript in a different way and improve it, so be grateful for that. Be positive in your language and in your outlook about them, the manuscript. Certainly positive in terms of your language and the revision report as if you feel that it will ultimately be published. And it will if you've done this properly. So then if you're me, you say a quick prayer, you submit it, and uh, a few weeks or sometimes a few months, Later, you finally get the paper unconditionally accepted. Well, best of luck. I hope this helped. If it did, please subscribe. Please tell your mates, other postgraduate students about this channel. It doesn't really matter what discipline in, they're in. It's the same process as all the time to log on, have a look and subscribe. This channel is all about helping other people and I can't help them without your help. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.